So now onto our dinosaur of the day, Velociraptor, and that name means Swift Caesar. There's two valid species. There's Velociraptor mongoliensis, which is the type species, and Velociraptor osmolske, which was named in 2008 when they found a skull in Inner Mongolia. Peter Kaizen found the first Velociraptor fossil in 1923 as part of the American Museum of Natural History expedition to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia. He found a crushed but complete skull and some second toe claws. And Henry Fairfield Osborne named the new genus Velociraptor. The species name Mongoliensis is named after Mongolia. Earlier in 1924, Osborne had called it Ovoraptor in a press article, but it wasn't a formal description or named in a scientific journal, so it's a nomum nudum, which means naked name. In 2008, Pascal Godefroy and colleagues named bones found in 1999 by the Sino Belgian dinosaur expeditions Velociraptor Osmolske for the Polish paleontologist. Halska Osmolska, and they found that it was Velociraptor, but wasn't similar enough to just be named Velociraptor mongoliensis. Previously recognized Velociraptor species include Velociraptor enteropus and Velociraptor langstoni, which was formerly Deinonychus enteropus and Sornithelestes langstoni. More than a dozen skeletons have been described, which is more than any other dromaeosaurid. In 1990, a joint Mongolian-American expedition in the Gobi found more Velociraptor skeletons, and one is nicknamed Ichabod Craniosaurus because it's a fairly complete skeleton without a skull. <laughs> Two Velociraptor-like skulls were found in an Ovaraptorid nest in Mongolia, discovered in the 90s as well, although after doing a little more digging, I think that they were found to not be Velociraptor but Byronosaurus instead. So Velociraptor was a dromaeosaurid theropod that lived in the Cretaceous, and it was originally thought to be part of Megalosauridae, which is a wastebasket taxon. It was a carnivore, it was probably intelligent, and it had a large brain in proportion to its body size, and Velociraptor may have been nocturnal. Adults grew up to be 6.8 feet or 2.07 meters long and weighing 33 pounds or 15 kilograms, and the skull could be up to 10 inches or 25 centimeters long. You may know, and we've talked about before in previous episodes, that's much smaller than how Velociraptor is depicted in Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's more on the order of a Utah raptor size. Yeah, but Velociraptor had a long tail and a long, low skull with an upturned snout, and they may have been able to run as fast as 24 miles per hour or 39 kilometers per hour. They were bipedal and they had feathers. And in 2007, paleontologists found quill knobs on a Velociraptor mongoliensis forearms, which confirmed that it had feathers. Turner, Norrell, and Peter Makovicki said that the feathers on Velociraptor were evidence against the idea that larger Manoraptorans lost their feathers because they were bigger. And quill knobs aren't really found in modern flightless birds, so the fact that Velociraptor had quill knobs probably means that their ancestors could fly, and Velociraptor and other relatives were secondarily flightless though maybe their ancestors used feathers for something other than flight, too. Yeah, because quill knobs just mean that they're firmly attached. So if you're doing something else other than flying, you might still need that. Mm -hmm. So Velociraptor, their arms were too short to fly or glide. They may have used their feathers for display, to help brood, or to increase their speed when running up slopes. Wing-assisted inclined running comes back again. Yeah. <laughs> Not surprisingly, they looked a lot like birds. And like birds, they also had wishbones, they brooded nests, and they had hollow bones, and then of course they had feathers. Kiwi birds are actually similar to velociraptors. They have similar feather types, anatomy, bone structure, and a narrow anatomy of nasal passages. And kiwi birds are very active and flightless, so they make a good model for the metabolism of dromaeosaurids, which probably had a moderate metabolism. And I think that's hilarious <laughs> to compare a kiwi bird, which is so darn cute. <laughs> Velociraptor. That's depicted as being like so ferocious. And... Mm -hmm. Plus they just look so helpless because they don't really have arms or much. Or hands, yeah. yeah. And they just have a really long beak that they slowly walk along a beach poking into the sand. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, back to Velociraptor. Velociraptor had jaws that had 26 to 28 teeth on each side and the back edges of the teeth were more serrated than the front. They also had three curved claws in each hand, similar to the wing bones of modern birds. Their second digit was the longest, and the first was the shortest. They had four toes, but they only walked on their third and fourth toes, and the first toe 
had a small dew claw, and then the second toe was held off the ground and had a large sickle-shaped claw. Yep, I think everybody knows about that by now. <laughs> yeah, and they probably used that to tackle their prey. And the sickle-shaped claw grew to over 2.6 inches or 6.5 centimeters long. They may have been able to climb trees with their toe claws. And one skeleton of Velociraptor is found in a fighting position with protoceratops. So this was found in 1971 by a Polish-Mongolian team, and they found what they call the fighting dinosaurs when they found them in Mongolia. And at first, scientists thought that the fighting dinosaurs had drowned, but they were preserved in ancient sand dune deposits, so now they think they were buried in sand from a collapsing dune or in a sandstorm, and it probably happened pretty quickly. In the fighting dinosaurs, the Velociraptor's sickle-like claw is in the Protoceratops' throat, Oof. and the Protoceratops' beak is clamped on the Velociraptor's right forelimb, so Velociraptor may have used its claw to pierce the jugular vein or trachea instead of slashing and disemboweling its prey. Yikes. Yeah. According to Dr. David Hone, the Velociraptor in fighting dinosaurs was either starving or young and dumb, since the Protoceratops was 50% bigger than it. So that's kind of interesting. A 2005 BBC documentary called The Truth About Killer Dinosaurs created an artificial velociraptor leg with a sickle claw and tried to disembowel a pork belly, but it could not tear it open, which kind of shows that velociraptor may not have been able to disembowel its prey. I wonder how scientific that test was. <laughs> well, they had a paleontologist oversee it, Philip okay. Manning. They tried to disembowel an animal that didn't evolve for like another... 70 million years too. Yeah. Well, so Philip Manning said, quote, using the claw to slash would have been like me trying to disembowel you with a plastic spoon. Okay. So I guess they figured it wasn't going to work, so it didn't really matter because it wasn't capable anyway. In 2011, Denver Fowler and colleagues said that Velociraptor may have used a, quote, Raptor Prey Restraint, or RPR, where they leaped onto their prey, pinned them, and held onto them with their sickle-shaped claws. Then they would start to eat their prey, which would die from blood loss and organ failure. And then the Velociraptors would use their tails to help them counterbalance. Apparently hawks do the same thing, where they pin down their prey and start eating them alive. Oof. Sounds gruesome. Birds. Yeah. Interestingly, there's not really any evidence that Velociraptor was a pack hunter, as depicted in Jurassic Park. Many isolated fossils have been found, but none closely associated with other specimens. Velociraptor probably ate small animals like reptiles, amphibians, insects, small dinosaurs, and mammals, and it may have been a scavenger. In 2010, David Hone and colleagues published a study of teeth they found in 2008 near a protoceratops jawbone. It was probably a, quote, late-stage carcass consumption by Velociraptor, end quote, because normally it would eat other parts of a protoceratops, or it would go for the throat, as seen in the fighting dinosaurs. Velociraptor also ate pterosaurs. They found a large pterosaur bone in a velociraptor gut in 2012. It probably scavenged that one, since the pterosaur had a large wingspan of six and a half feet or two meters and would have been a pretty formidable foe. Velociraptor may have also fought each other. There's one skull that shows two rows of small punctures, the same size and spacing of velociraptor teeth, and there's no signs of healing, so it probably died of these wounds. And again, as we mentioned, the velociraptors in Jurassic Park were modeled after Deinonychus, also Utah raptor. Apparently, Michael Crichton met John Ostrom, who discovered Deinonychus, to talk about its behavior and appearance, and then apologetically told Ostrom that he used the name velociraptor instead because it sounded more dramatic. <laughs> so I didn't know that John Ostrom knew. Yeah, that's funny. And then, of course, Utah Raptor was discovered while Jurassic Park was in production, and we talked to Jim Kirkland about that in episode 34. The raptor sounds in Jurassic Park were tortoise mating sounds, which are used when raptors are barking at each other to talk to each other. <laughs> An article in Slate points out that Jurassic World has a strong female lead, which is, of course, the Velociraptor Blue. Blue chooses her ally at the end. It's between Indominus Rex or humans. And of course, has a close relationship with the character Owen Grady. And Discover Magazine contemplated if Velociraptors could be trained the way that Owen Grady trained them. Assuming that Velociraptors were pack hunters, and this is based on evidence of a group of Dromaeosaur tracks found in 2007 in China, so it is possible, although there's not too much evidence of it, that means that they were intelligent. And according to Jack Horner, 
in falconry, you train through positive reinforcement by rewarding them with food and protection, so you probably could train velociraptors that way. Also, you would assert dominance and become the alpha, like Owen Grady does, and also do imprinting. Whoever's there when they hatch is seen as the mother, and you see this with geese and other modern birds. And of course, in Jurassic World, they may have just tweaked the velociraptor DNA to make them more docile. Yeah, once you can bring in the whole, we're just going to mess with their DNA to make them act a certain way or do a certain thing, it opens up just about any possibility. Yeah. Like a human hybrid. Oh, <laughs> glad they don't go that way. This is kind of weird. There's a website called velociraptors.info, and it's the official website for the American Society for Velociraptor Attack Prevention. And the website says that it's a, quote, bipartisan group of professionals dedicated to the diffusion of knowledge concerning velociraptor attack prevention. And according to them, June is National Velociraptor Awareness Month. And, quote, the American Society for Velociraptor Attack Prevention, along with the North American Velociraptor Defense Association and the United Velociraptor Widows Fund, will be providing free velociraptor safety seminars at local Red Cross centers across the nation. Contact your local center for more information, end quote. The website also gives a description of velociraptors, home buyer tips so you're prepared in case of velociraptor attacks, and a quiz to find out if your neighbors are velociraptors. And I wish I knew the backstory behind this website. <laughs> It's very goofy. It is. It's also very official looking. Although I tried to get to the quiz. Looks like that may have been taken down. It's a bit of a bummer. Yeah. Maybe it got put up for like Jurassic World. Someone was having a joke website and then... Could be. It's been left in disrepair. There's a thing on Thingiverse that lets you download a Velociraptor business card, which gives you parts to 3D print, and then you can assemble into your own Velociraptor. Hmm. So... Lots of cool media stuff around Velociraptor. Oh, on a not-as-fun note, in late May of this year, Paltons Park near Romsey, Hampshire in the UK had an incident where 15 passengers were stuck 45 feet in the air for 40 minutes on their new Velociraptor ride. There was a hissing sound, and then the brakes locked the car into the beginning of one of the drops. And eventually all the riders were evacuated, but... As long as they're not upside down, I always think... If I get stuck on a roller coaster, as long as I'm right side up, I'll be okay. It would be kind of intimidating being at the top of the drop, because then what if it just starts going? Yeah, but that's what you're expecting anyway. Yeah, but in a controlled way, not accidental. Yeah. It enhances the excitement. Oh, goodness. <laughs> anyway, Velociraptor is, again, part of Dromaeosauridae, and it's also part of the subfamily Velociraptorinae which are all dromaeosaurs more closely related to Velociraptor than Dromaeosaurus. Other genera in Velociraptorinae include Deinonychus and Sauronithylestes. Dromaeosaurids are carnivorous theropods closely phylogenetically related to Aves, which is a clad that includes birds. They probably originated before the late Jurassic, but the fossil record so far is only of the Cretaceous. They lived all over the world, but there's not that many fossils. Dromaea swords from the late Cretaceous in North America have a poor fossil record and are known mostly from isolated teeth. They're often referred to as raptors because of Jurassic Park, and they had S-curved necks, long arms, and large hands with large claws, and their feet had a recurved claw on the second toe, the sickle claw. This claw, again, may have been used for slashing, climbing, or even clawing through insect nests. At least some of them may have lived in groups. Most, if not all, had feathers, and they were bipedal, but they held their second toe off the ground when walking, and they had long tails that may have been used to help counterbalance. They're generally small to medium-sized, though Utah Raptor was large, and some could fly or glide, like Chengyu Raptor, and they're very bird-like in their behavior and also the fact that they had feathers. 